following is a production of the Department of Broadcasting and Journalism at Western Illinois University. Coming up on News 3 Live at 4, the holiday season is upon us and local fire officials want to remind you to be safe lighting up the Christmas tree and hanging decorations. And we have new information about the funding for a new school in the Macomb School District. Hear from the district on how they are hoping to pay for the project. Plus a pleasant afternoon after a chilly start this morning. How long will these mild temperatures last? Storm Team 3's Jared Streeter has a look at your weather. News 3 Live at 4 starts now. Live from Salee Hall in high definition. News 3 starts now. The city of Macomb is discussing reducing the amount of parking spaces required for local owners. Good afternoon and welcome to Live at 4. I'm Mackenzie Irby. And I'm Devin Brooks. Macomb City Council is looking at changing off-street parking regulations. It would apply to residential, commercial, and retail, along with entertainment and industrial facilities in town. The city would base the amount of parking on the number of square feet inside of the building. City Administrator Scott Coker says this change is helping businesses to, and loosen up restrictions. So one example for a department store, so many square feet within the building requires so many spaces. So we're just reducing that a little bit. The discussion on parking will continue next week. Well, two weeks after being promoted to police chief, Colchester City leaders are giving the chief a pay raise. Last night, Colchester City Council voted 4-2 to two to increase the chief's pay to $16.56 per hour. Chief Michael DeWitt was making $14.62. Alderman Mike Eddy and Ron Clark says they voted against the raise because they believe the chief should be paid more money. Eddy says he feels making the pay higher would bring more officers to the department. I just think that you're going to have to pay the chief more if you're going to be willing to pay other officers who may be very qualified. The police committee needs to meet and really look at all of this. The council also agreed to give full-time city employees a $100 bonus and part-time employees a $50 bonus. A Bushnell native threw his hat into the race for the upcoming state representative election. Over the weekend, 26-year-old Emiliano Vera held a celebration for being on the campaign trail for the past six months. The Bushnell Democrat is the first openly gay candidate for state representative in downstate Illinois. Vera says his platform focuses on opposing violence and seeking justice for women, people of color, and queer people. Vera announced his candidacy in June. He is set to face Rushville resident Scott Stoll in March primary. The Macomb School Board is asking the state to help fund the new middle school. At November, November's monthly meeting, the board discussed applying for grants that could cover half the cost for the estimated $19 million cost of the new school. Superintendent Patrick Toomey believes the money from the state could make a big difference. We're going to work very hard to write applications for the construction grants that are currently available at the state. And uh, if we would be lucky enough to be approved, uh, that would be the state paying for half the building, $9.5 million. That would be a game changer for the district. The board hopes to have the grant submitted by January and to be approved by August. Well, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, but the temperatures were mild today. Will temperatures soon match the festive scenery? Storm Team 3, Jarrett Streeter has a look at your weather. Jarrett, how's it going? It is actually relatively nice outside, and we're not seeing any more of the blizzard or the snow that we've been seeing over the past week, luckily. Right now, 45 degrees outside. Winds are a little brisk right now at about 9 miles an hour. Right now, we do see our jet stream starting to move through the area. This is what's going to bring us a little bit of our cooler temperatures as we head into the next couple days. As you can see, the wind's starting to come down from the north. Here's our surface map. We do have a high pressure system starting to move through, so there's not going to be many clouds over the area. So there's not going to be much chance for the, the heat to be trapped in the area so that our nights are actually going to be much cooler than the days. Looking at tonight, our low is going to be about 30 degrees. It's going to be mostly clear winds, about 15 miles an hour. So it's going to be a bit cooler. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Jarrett. And with the beginning of the holiday season, you might have extra electronics or lights plugged into the electrical outlet. News 3 Matt Weinert spoke with the Macomb Fire Department on how you can keep you and your family safe. Well, you're seeing around the holidays, you're going to see a lot more use of 
extra lighting that you're not going to have in other times during the year. Curtis Walters is a firefighter at the Macomb Fire Department. He says with the extra use of holiday lights and decorations comes potential dangers. The nice thing is with a lot of the newer LED lights, they're pulling a lighter electrical load than what lights in the past have done. But you want to make sure that you're using the appropriate lights in the appropriate places and you're not overloading the circuits. Walters also suggests using power strips to reduce the risk of starting a fire. Uh, make use of uh, power strips because um, a lot of the power strips will come and they'll have a fuse in there that if, you get to, if they are overloaded, they'll trip. The lights and electrical decorations aren't the only dangers of the holiday season. Probably at least 50% of the cause of fires um, in, around holiday time is, is candle related. Walters also suggests to never leave a burned candle unsupervised. Just make sure that they, are, uh, they have been blown out before you leave the house. Um, it's best not to let children blow the candles out just because especially with the bigger holiday candles, uh, that liquid wax can be blown back on them when they're trying to blow them out. For News 3, I am Matt Widener. The Macomb Fire Department also noted that exterior lights should only be used outside and vice versa to help reduce the potential risk of fire. The city of Galesburg has a new fire chief. Fire Marshal Randy Hoven will serve as the next fire chief for the city of Galesburg. Hoven takes over as leader of the department following the retirement of Chief Tom Simpkins, who served for the last 10 years. Fire Marshal Holvin has over 20 years of professional experience with the department, holding positions of firefighter, fire captain, and fire marshal at the rank of battalion chief. Holvin was born and raised in Galesburg and is a graduate of Western Illinois University. And we are less than four days away until Santa Claus comes to town to kick off the annual Dickens on the Square. After Santa comes to town, kids will have a chance to visit him at his cabin on the north side of the square. There will also be horse-drawn trolley rides, li living windows, festival of trees, and live reindeer. On Saturday, breakfast will be served at the Western Illinois Museum, and the Children's Shopping Mall will return to Citizens Bank. And also this year, there will be a little extra sparkle added to Dickens on the Square. Right now, the courthouse looks a little bare, but on Friday night, the WIU Department of Theater and Dance will unveil the lighted courthouse. The entire courthouse will be covered with Christmas lights to compete in a Christmas light competition to win lighting equipment for the university. The lights will be on display on Friday from 6 to 9 p.m., and it will change to music every half hour. And new at four, the Vitamin Lady store is now empty. Store owner Cindy Phillips finished moving everything out this morning. After being in business 30 plus years, she is moving to Lexington, Kentucky, where she will open another store. New a new furniture store is set to open in its place. Well, still to come on Live at Four, the Chicago Police Department is using social media to crack down on crime after finding a dozen guns being sold on Facebook. Also, a police officer is injured after a second school shooting at a Wisconsin high school in less than two days. Stay with us. Live at Four will be right back. Live at Four is back in a moment. Western Illinois University is here to serve your future. Large enough to provide opportunities, small enough to connect you to them. Your potential is our purpose. Explore your talents in a place you belong.
live from Salee Hall in high definition. Live at 4 continues. Developing news this afternoon out of Wisconsin after an armed student and a school resource officer were injured. Police say the student confronted a school resource officer at Oshkoff West High School in Oshkoff, Wisconsin, Tuesday morning. The officer then opened fire, shooting and injuring the student. The officer was also hurt. They were both taken to the hospital in unknown condition. I'm screaming. And then after like two minutes, she ran back into the classroom and she's like, everybody needs to evacuate right now. And then we all ran out of the class and then we saw everybody from our school running to across the street. This shooting comes a day after a similar incident at Wakashi uh, South High School near Milwaukee, where an officer shot and injured a student who pointed a gun at officers. Chicago police say they are cracking down on people selling guns and drugs on Facebook. Police announced the arrest of 53 people as a part of their undercover investigation known as Operation Facebook. Officials say weapons and drugs were being sold in private or invisible Facebook groups. Chicago police say Typical Facebook users cannot find these groups with a simple search. They have to be invited inside. Facebook has not responded to the police department's criticism. More than 50 million people now under a winter weather alert as storms pound both U.S. coasts. Mandy Gather reports. From flakes falling in Times Square to snow in the Sierra, coast to coast, it's beginning to look a lot like winter. This snow came in hard and furious and will continue to come down through Tuesday. The heaviest snowfall expected from upstate New York into New England, where some places have already reported as much as 18 inches. In New York, a state of emergency declared for seven counties. In Boston, public school canceled Tuesday with the expectation of six to eight more inches of snow by Tuesday afternoon. Most of it expected during the morning commute. Massachusetts Governor Charlie Baker urging people to use public transportation. We did see some pretty significant accidents today in a variety of places around Massachusetts, mostly in central and uh, south central Massachusetts. And those clearly had to do with road conditions. The weather also making travelers wary. Nearly 800 U.S. flights canceled Monday, according to FlightAware.com. Thousands of miles away, Northern California also dealing with snow and rain with more to come over the next 48 hours. I'm Mandy Gaither reporting. Well, luckily, all that is just on the coast and not affecting us. We're actually going to see bright, sunny skies. However, our temperatures are going to start to decrease as we head in the next few days. I'll have all that and more when we come back. Rooted in teaching tradition, the desire to impact lives through education marks our Western identity. We believe every student with the hope to succeed deserves a chance at our institution. We're invested in honing each student's individual strengths to turn that hope into promise. Our commitment shows in everything that we do. It guides our faculty with empathy. It grows our students with courage. It moves each of us with purpose. In Macomb and Quad Cities, all walks of life meet to share cultures, ideas, and aspirations. Together, our students welcome new perspectives, helping them bring true value wherever they go next. Whatever the next challenge or change we face, our fighting spirit strengthens and evolves. With fortitude, we remain devoted to our vision. Brave and loyal, we stand as Leathernecks. For our students, for our region, for our state, and beyond. And when we stand together, we stand up for what matters, going forth as one. And that unity takes us far beyond what we've ever imagined.
Welcome back and good afternoon, Macomb. Outside about 45 degrees. The winds, however, are going to make it seem a little bit cooler than it is outside. It's about south about nine miles an hour. Humidity about 68 percent and our dew points right around 35 degrees, which could mean that we could see it start to start to see some fog as we head into the later hours tonight and the temperatures start to cool down. Looking at our average high at this time of year, we're right around this. In fact, a little bit higher. 41 degrees is our average high. 40, 23 is our average low. Our record high this time of year, 70 degrees. Luckily, we're not seeing any of this record low of negative 10 degrees. Luckily, we're not seeing that tonight or at all. Looking at our surface map, we do have some high pressure systems starting to move their way over. So what that's going to do is it's going to clear all the clouds out of our area. It's going to make the sun's the, the sky really clear and it's going to make it relatively cool, cold at night because the heat's not going to be able to trap itself as we head into the overnight hours. So it's going to be much cooler. Looking at our, the clouds right now, we can start to see the high pressure system start to move the clouds out of our area. Looking at our current radar, there's not a whole lot going on in our area at all. In fact, everything's just moving out. So again, those high pressure systems are a result of that. Looking at our current temperatures, 45 degrees here in Macomb, 47 up in Burlington, 46 in Keokuk, Beardstown about 42, and Springfield, as you can see behind me, about 43. Looking at our temperatures tonight, 27 degrees here in Macomb, Beardstown 32, Quincy 32, and Keokuk 32 as well. Looking at tomorrow, our temperature is going to go right back up a little bit. 39 here in Macomb, I believe it's going to be a little bit higher than that. That's my apologies. 50 in Be Beardstown, 52 in Quincy, 50 in Keokuk. We could probably expect about the 50 degree mark tomorrow here in Macomb as well. Looking at tomorrow night, temperatures are going to drop right back down. 27 degrees in Macomb, Beardstown 29, Quincy 31, and Keokuk 30 as well. Looking at tonight here in Macomb, 30 degrees, winds about 15 miles an hour. So if you're out and about tonight, you're definitely going to need a windbreaker because this, the wind is going to go right through and it's going to feel bitterly cold. 30 degrees, mostly clear tonight. Looking at tomorrow, partly cloudy with a high of 46, winds about wet with wind gusts that could reach upwards of 20 miles an hour. So tomorrow, even though it's going to be about 46 degrees, the winds are going to make it feel even cooler. Looking at tomorrow night, lows are going to drop again, 28 degrees with, a, with winds west, about 5 miles an hour. Luckily, the winds are going to start to decrease as we head into tomorrow night. Let's go ahead and take a look at our five-day forecast. As you can see, tomorrow our high is 46 with a low of 28. Thursday, a high of 48, low of 28. Friday, it's going to be partly cloudy with a high of 38, low of 24. Looking at Saturday, it's going to be a decent weekend. High of 44 on Saturday with a low of 36. And Sunday, all sun with a high of 50 and a low of 35. Really doesn't okay. look too bad. No, <laughs> it's actually going to be relatively pleasant in the next few days. I mean, the, the wind's going to be brutal the next couple days, but mm -hmm. honestly, it's, it's going to be nice out. Yeah, but right. you have to stay in because we have to study for finals, right? That's uh, right. Yeah. Jared, thank <laughs> you. And Michael, you ready? It's your last sports. Yes, I am ready for the final sports of my college career. We've got both WIU basketball teams in action in the midweek this week. Plus, the Macomb Bombers did not have to wait long to get back in action after Turkey Day. They were in home. They were at home excuse me, against Canton last night. Find out how that went. And four Leatherneck football players received postseason awards. Find out who got them and what they got. That's what's next in sports. Western Illinois University is here to serve your future. Large enough to provide opportunities. Small enough to connect you to them. Your potential is our purpose. Explore your talents in a place you belong.
University is here to serve your future. Large enough to provide opportunities, small enough to connect you to them. You are unique, and we are committed to you. Become the future you at WIU Quad Cities. Welcome back to Live at Four. One more time, I'm Michael Dion. Well, Backlit Rakovich was a major piece of the offense for the Western Illinois football team in 2019, and his big year earned him some postseason recognition. The Red Sir Jr. was named to the All Missouri Valley Football First. Uh, first team all conference. Ratkovich led WIU in rushing yards, was the number one receiver with 57 catches, and finished tied first on the team with six touchdowns. Also named to that named to the second team, senior long snapper Jared Drake, who said in very plain terms why he plays the game of football. It, it's it's good for the program. The, that's the most important thing. But I you know I don't play the position. I don't play the game for individual recognition. I play it for. You know, my teammates for my brothers. And the awards kept coming for WIU. Junior defensive back Marquis Smith and redshirt freshman return specialist Justin Hall were named to the MVFC All Newcomer team. Smith registered 41 tackles, two fumble recoveries, and an interception in 10 games. Meanwhile, Hall led the conference with 706 combined return yards. 660 of those came off kick returns, the fifth best single season return year in program history. The Macomb High School girls basketball team took to the floor Monday night in search of the year's first win still. The Bombers took to the hangar on Washington Street to host the Canton Lady Giants. In the first quarter, it's Bailey, Cul uh, Bailey Culver who's going to get this to go in, lay up, and it is Canton off to a 4-1 to one lead. Next possession for Canton. The inbound is stolen away by the Bombers. Reagan Emmerich puts home the easy bucket. 4-3 to three, Canton. McComb would try to hang in. Canton went on a big run. Second quarter, Grace Stuffelbeam drains one of her six threes on the night. It's 25-11. to 11. Canton would not give in. They kept going. Blair Jacobs, uh, Jacobus, excuse me, knocks down the mid-range jumper and the Lady Giants coast to a 69 to 54 victory over the Lady Bombers. In college hoops, WIU women's basketball is 4-4 four four through the first eight games of the year, which is a one-game improvement over last year, but they still have plenty of bumps in a road. WIU had 17 turnovers the last time out against Missouri Baptist. They only had 16 assists in that game. That's not a good ratio, and that was against an NAIA school, inferior competition. And things could get rough if that repeats itself against Wednesday's opponent in state rival ISU. The Redbirds are 5-1 this year, and they have a 16-point win over Illinois. Historically, the series does not favor Western. 43-3 is the all-time series record in favor of the Redbirds. However, Western will be going for a third win in the last four years against the Redbirds when they head to Bloomington Wednesday at 6. On the men's side of things, WIU is coming off a one-point loss to the UMKC Ruse over the weekend. The loss drops Billy Wright's squad to 2-5 and five this season. But four of their losses have come by less than 10 points. They've been competitive. Webster and company will try and get back into the win column against Evansville Wednesday night at 6 p.m. You can find that game on ESPN3. And going to national news, Monday night was the end of the Bulls three-game West Coast Road Swing. It was in the capital of California against the Sacramento Kings. Kings up seven in the first quarter, and Rashawn Holmes drives and powers home two of his 20 points on the night. Second quarter, tables have turned. Bulls are up 11. They were down nine earlier in that first quarter, and then Lowry Marketing drives to the rim and scores. Zach Levine with the layup and one. That makes the first, uh, score of the first half 55 to 44. Start of the second half, Rashawn Holmes catches an alley oop. Look at the nice power over Thomas Sedaransky. Fourth quarter, Bulls are hanging on desperate three to a lead, and Lowry Marketing comes through again, hits a big three from the corner and from the wing Zach Levine puts the game away with that three the Bulls beat the Kings 113 to 106 and last night was game one of the series between the Blues and Blackhawks four games this year the Hawks have been in the basement of the Central while the Blues have had a much different tone atop the Central Division in the NHL first period Mitch Dunn from center ice easily poked away by Corey Crawford but Mackenzie McKern with the backhanded shot blues up one to nothing later in the first period 
uh, on the power play. Alex Petrangelo with a slap shot near the blue line, tipped up front, judged by Corey Crawford. It is two to nothing. Middle of the second period, the side father, Brandon side, trying to get something going, easily stopped by Jake Allen. The Hawks would get nothing going in this game. And then the third, the Blues kept rolling. Jaden Schwartz passes it from the boards to the middle. A spinning backhand pass finds Braden Shin for the one timer goal. The Blues go on to shut out the Blackhawks four to nothing. And that's it for sports. The final Tuesday final word is next. We are Western Illinois University and we are amazing. On Fridays, we were purple. We are home to professional athletes and actors, lawmakers, CEOs, a civil rights leader, and a three-star general plus over 100,000 other impressive alumni. Our programs are mighty. Our law enforcement program is the largest in the state of Illinois and is known internationally. Supply chain management boasts a nearly 100% job placement rating. And cornfields might surround us, but we have a fine arts program that can rival any large city. It's okay to take courses in wine tasting, wedding planning, scuba diving, grain drying, renaissance art, engineering computational methods, or advanced federal taxation. Sometimes our classes even take us to Disney World. The Apostle Islands, Greece, France, all around the world. For fun, we spray paint a bulldog statue, race cardboard boats, and shave our heads and dance all night to raise money for charities. Not only do we paint the paws before homecoming, but we show our love for our mighty mascot, Colonel Rock, with painted statues all over town. Sometimes we play volleyball with a giant pink ball, and sometimes we play in the mud. It's totally normal to look at our res hall windows and see a hot air balloon floating by. Or experience all four seasons in one day. Hey alumni, jump on that Amtrak from Chicago or St. Louis or anywhere in between. And come back to get a horseshoe, listen to the award-winning jazz studio orchestra, or tailgate before a D1 game. Not every school can say they started the four-year cost guarantee program and have a second campus on the banks of the mighty Mississippi. We are Western Illinois University. And we, we are, are the Leathernecks. Thank you very much for listening. And for one more time on 88.3 The Dawn, for Evan Williamson, and then hey, back to the studio, and for all the people that I've worked with over these three and a half years. And thank you so much to your listeners. You guys mean so much to me. Good night, Nicole. Yeah, if you haven't heard already, it is your last day with us. Yep. And you just did your last sports, but yep. you're about to graduate. How does it feel? It's, it, it is, <laughs> it's, it's weird, man. I mean, you know, in the, in the way we do things in the, in the U.S., right, you only know school from age, like, mm -hmm. memory to age, you know, 21, 22, 23, depending on <laughs> yep. how, how long community college takes and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I follow a pretty straight path. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's weird, man. Well, you know, it's people don't weird. know, not only did you just step right into this role and, you know, help, but behind the scenes, you're one of the most energetic people. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's rapid. <laughs> He's okay, our I appreciate it. You know, I, I have a lot of passion. I have a lot of passion for these people and I have a lot of, a lot of passion for this business that I hope to be in someday. And uh, me and professionally, and, uh, and uh, I like a lot of you guys, and uh, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, well, we're, we're, we're a little bit more, but we're going to toss the weather real fast. I, actually, oh. um, I think we're just going to go right to the end here. Okay. Oh, so, okay, yes. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. And we are online all the time. <laughs> Stay up to date with us, news3wiu.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Just search our handle, News3WIU. You can also search for us on YouTube and subscribe. Thank you for joining us this evening. From all of us at News3, have a good night, Macomb.